In today's video, I'm going to show you how I color graded this photo in Capture One 21. Now, before I get into this video, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. If you purchase Capture One using my affiliate link, I'll receive a small commission at no extra cost to yourself, and it will ultimately help me and this channel grow. You'll also find a link to a free trial as well. So we have our retouch TIFF here. This photo is being sent off to a retoucher and fully retouched already. So we're not going to cover any of that today. We're simply going to focus on creative color grading. Now, when I get my image back from a retoucher, I always like to start by adding contrast using curves. Now, when it comes to using curves, we have two options. We can either use an RGB curve or a Luma curve. Using an RGB curve will also introduce quite a lot of saturation. If we use a Luma curve, however, will only affect the brightness and the darkness of the photo. So what I'm going to do is create two new cloned variants. In the first variant, I'm going to show you what an S curve will look like using the RGB curves. Now this is a very crude curve, way, way too much, way overdone. But this is just to demonstrate what effect both curves are going to have on the photo. Now if we create another crude S curve with our Luma curve instead of RGB, we'll see the difference that it makes. Now if we pull up these photos side by side, you can see in this first photo that everything is far more saturated. Whereas in our second image, we've really only affected the darkness and the lightness of the photo. Obviously, both these curves are way too strong. So let's remove this variant. Let's remove our RGB curve, reset it using the reset button. And for this photo, I'm just going to work with the Luma curve because I do want to add saturation, but I want the most control over my color grading. I'm going to add saturation back in later. Uh, so just for a starting point, I'm going to pull up a small S curve here, bringing up the highlights and pulling down the shadows a bit. Now, if we hold down our Alt key and press the reset button at the same time, it will remove our variant. And then if we let go of the mouse again, it will come back on. So without and with, I like this as a starting point. So let's go with this. One thing I often do is adjust the exposure of our photo. Now I like the highlights of the image to be almost clipping. You can see on the cheek here that this is probably our brightest point in the image. I'm going to pull up our exposure a little bit. So that becomes even more apparent. Now we can toggle it on and off again using the Alt key. So with and without. It's just brought the overall exposure up and I like the kind of sheen you're getting on the skin. I'm not going to touch contrast or brightness here, but I am going to tweak our saturation. Now, if we pull it way up, you can see that it's affecting the image massively. And this is way too strong. She's got a ridiculous tan going on here and I definitely don't want this in the final photo. So let's pull that down um, and just bump it up to 10 on this occasion just so we're adding a little bit of saturation in as it's too flat for my liking without. Now one thing I do want to do here is bring up the saturation of the dress but without affecting the saturation of the rest of the image. So how I like to go about this is by using a mask. We're going to come up to our layers tab at the top and create a new empty adjustment layer. Now we're going to hit B to use our brush tool. And we're going to paint a crude mask just around the edge of our dress. I'll speed this up in the edit so you don't have to watch it all. But if we hit our M key, now you can see our mask. If we hit the M key again, it will hide it. So we'll bring it up and leave it up for now. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to our layer tab and click fill mask. This will just fill in the middle of our mask. Massive time saver. Now, this mask doesn't need to be perfect as we're going to only be affecting a very selective color, just the blues. So let's hit our M key to hide our mask again. Now we're going to pop over to our color tab. And under color editor here, we're going to come to our advanced tab and using this little eyedropper, we're going to pick a mid-tone of the dress. 
So something that's not too bright and not too dark, somewhere around here looks good to me. Now if we come over here and just click view selected color range, we can see the areas that we're affecting here. So as you can see, we're not affecting the, the color of the background, the hair, or the skin. We are purely affecting the color of the dress here. Now I'm going to come down to saturation. We're going to ignore all our other options here. We're just going to be using saturation on this occasion. Now we're going to pull our saturation up here. Somewhere around here looks good. And we'll toggle this back off again. Now if we turn our adjustment layer on and off, as you can see, we've only affected the color of the dress. This is looking really nice to me. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to go back into our curves on our background layer and make some very slight adjustments. I'm going to pull up our highlights a little bit and I'm going to pull down our shadows slightly more just for a little bit more contrast. So now using just a few quick steps, we've taken this photo from this to this. And we can even use the before and after slider to compare. On the left, we've got our before, which is quite flat and not very saturated. And on the right here, we've got a far more vibrant image, far more vibrant colors and a lot more contrast. Now, another thing we could do here is we could come into our color balance. And here we'll be presented with a color wheel with a master, a three-way, our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. What I'm going to use here is complementary color theory. We're going to pull down our shadows a little bit into the blues. Just about here and pull up our highlights into a sort of a warmer orangey color. Now, if we toggle this on and off, you'll see the difference we're making. The skin tones are nice and warm and the shadows are becoming more blue. I really like this look and it's a sort of teal effect you'll see in a lot of Hollywood movies. Let's pull up our before and after once more. So before and after. And I'm very happy with how this photo is looking now. Thank you for watching guys. This is just a quick overview of how I graded this photo. Everybody's process is going to be different, but this is how I like to work. If you found this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you are subscribed, be sure to turn on those notification bells if you want to be notified of when I release a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.